Once again, we're looking in the rear view at the recent YMBL shootout bull ride at Beaumont's Ford Arena. As in years past, eight-time world champion bull rider Donnie Gay was on hand to help out with the announcing. And, of course, we've had him on the King of the Road show before. Here he is, the man, eight-time world champion Don Gay. Welcome back to Beaumont, man. Well, thank you, Jim. You know, the, I like the King of the Road hat. I ne that's one thing I never had was a crown. You know, they just wouldn't give me one. Because <laughs> no, I'd have probably wore it, too. You won eight of them. You didn't need one. Everybody <laughs> knew you were the king of the, of the ring, that's for sure. Well, everything uh, went real well. I had a great opportunity. And... Uh, you know, so far, what do you think about the bull riding here? I think it's fantastic. Outstanding. The bulls are bucking. Cowboys are riding good. Uh, can't be a whole lot better than that. Anyway, back to the live entertainment with Robert Earl Keen. Stand out on Main Street across Mr. Blues. My faded leather jacket, my weathered brogan shoes. A chill north wind was blowing, the spring was coming on. Cause I want to myself, this I long hadn't been gone. So I strolled across on Main Street, walked down a flight of stairs. Stepped to the hall and saw all my friends were there. A neon sign was flashing, welcome, come on in. Feels so good, feeling good again. Robert Earl Keen, uh, you you went to Texas A&M, huh? Yes, I did. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, that's all right. <laughs> I went that's to a, a roughneck ordering four beers. I, I think we we're we went. You were probably a few years before me, but yeah. I, I remember hearing a lot about you and uh, and uh, Lyle Lovett in those uh, days. And uh, you guys actually were neighbors there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we sure were. College Station. Uh huh. We and, uh, uh, we I've known Lyle since uh, 1976. Uh -huh. Before any of us knew who he was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, but he was always incredibly, incredibly talented. Uh -huh. guy, you know, I mean, uh, I I guess one reason we hooked up is because of the music. You know, and I, I we had uh, you know some similar interests and things like that. But he was uh, he was a lot a lot further ahead of me as far as like really uh, sitting down and writing songs. I'd written some songs, but he had some full-blown, you know, tapes and stuff he made uh -huh. himself. I was just astounded, you know, he, and a great singer. So uh, you guys used to play on the porch. In fact, you wrote a song called The Porch Song, uh -huh. and uh, I wish I, I would have paid admission to uh, be on that porch. But yeah. <laughs> we had some good times there, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't, uh, I, I'm, by and large, they weren't as wild as some people think they were. They were just mm -hmm. fun, you know. There yeah. was a little beer involved with yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. you know, but it wasn't crazy, crazy. I mean, there's a few crazy things, but... It, it, was, it wasn't completely out of control. It was, you know, just, we were just having a good time. This house was a, like, you know, it was a really, it was really funky and sort of broken down. And uh, then my rent was virtually nothing. So we mm -hmm. lived off virtually nothing. I was, I was there for uh, three years before I ever got a phone. <laughs> and, and the last day I was there, um, there had been this air conditioner that was sitting above my bed in my room. And we never even thought to plug it in because it was so busted up looking mm -hmm. and stuff. Last day I was there, an old man came by and said, you know, I used to live in this house. This is an old house. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I used to live in this house. Of course, we didn't have air conditioning back then, and I didn't. I just decided not to even talk to him about that. Uh -huh. so, so I let him walk through, and he walked off. I thought, you know what? I never checked out the air conditioning. So I got a two-by-four and went over there, and I propped that air conditioner up. I went back around my room, and I plugged it in. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> it blew out cold as air. It's just like a refrigerator. And you, it did you suffer before then? Or? But it was hot as hell in that house. <laughs> I mean, there was no wind a lot of times there in the Brazos Valley, right? Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe I spent all my time there at College Station, no AC, and I had it right there above my head. So there's, there's the true Aggie joke right there. Well, was College Station kind of a hotbed for Texas country? Or Texas country really wasn't even a, a genre in yeah. that in that day, was it? No, not really. Uh, no. Well, that's something that. Uh, that, that was, you know, there's kind of a spinoff from, uh, you know, what was happening in Austin in the mm -hmm. early and mid-70s, you know, the whole Willie Nelson and Greasy Wheels and 
Frida and the Fire Dogs and all these all these crazy bands that were running around. I mean, you know, in the end, it's like Gary P and Jerry Jeff and and Willie were about the only ones that kind of made it out of the the melee. But it it was big at that time. Mm -hmm. And then it all when I moved to Austin in the early '80s, it was a whole blues scene. It was all about Stevie Ray. And it was a great Isaac. town then too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a fantastic town, but it was all about blues. Right? Yeah, there, you couldn't find a country band. <laughs> I remember that it was like a, the Texas yeah. rock sound uh -huh. was really big, and yeah. there was one band I really liked back then. It was called the um, was the Skunks. Yeah. Remember, the, remember yeah. the Skunks? Yeah, they were great man. They, they yeah. broke up, but they were like one of my favorite. They were kind of a punk rock right. rock band. Right. Uh, I lived there too, there in, in the early '80s, yeah. and it was a great town. Yeah. I left in '83, and then it just right. got huge.